The reason we're making these videos is to give you as much information as possible about what a knee or a hip replacement is like before you undergo the surgery. When I sit in clinic, I can give you lots and lots of information about the surgical technique, about the implants, etc. But actually, quite a lot of the time the questions you have are best addressed by people who've had the operations done. A couple of years ago, I was very lucky to be able to do Dame Judy Dench's knee replacement for her. And she's kindly offered to give us some information today with me asking some questions about exactly what she went through and how she found having the knee replacement performed. And um, the thing, thing about having a, a really dodgy knee is um, not only do you start to limp very badly, but um, also you, you, it's what I mentioned before, is that thing you hear bone on bone and it's very, very disconcerting. And, uh, and, and getting to sleep at night is is hard because you can't get into a proper position. You know, it's hard to get into a position that's really going to afford you any kind of good night's sleep. But I mean, with me, it was lucky because I had to get better. I had to, you know. It's like my eyes. I can't see. I can't see scripts and things, but I've had to find a way of learning and, and um, somebody teaching me. Uh, so you adapt, but it's difficult to do it with a knee because the more it hurts, the more you limp and 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 the worse you feel and the first thing that everybody says to you is oh my goodness how are you 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 know you don't look so it's your pride really that should get you going oh i'm i think it woke, woke me throughout the night the pain i had trouble with my left knee and some oh quite a long time ago and i had an arthroscopy done because I was just feeling uncom really uncomfortable. But actually nothing like the right subsequently, which um, I remember being in Cornwall on holiday. Uh, I suppose it was about, f how long ago was it? Five? Yeah, two, three years ago probably. Well, yes, yeah. three, or, yeah. three or four years. And I remember walking and being in pain before it, but then as I walked, I could hear hear something rubbing against something else as I walked and that was unbelievable. I hadn't experienced that before. This is a great question because everyone's different. Everyone's x-rays look different. Everyone's symptoms look different and for some people they can carry on with shocking looking x-rays but are actually managing to function very nicely. Other people's x-rays don't look quite as bad but actually the, the pain is very debilitating for them. And my opinion is to try and catch them on just before they get to the stage when they stop coping with the knee. Now it's a fairly esoteric concept but if someone is stopping doing what they would normally do, for instance going for a long walk on a Sunday afternoon, because they're getting pain in the knee, that is going to stop the pain, but it's also going to mean that the muscular structures around the knee are going to be deconditioned. And so therefore the recovery from the knee is going to be that much more difficult. But it is, it's a very difficult um, question, and as you'll see in the, in the video that follows with, with, with um, Dame Judy Dench, that she gave a lot of thought to when was the best time to have it done. Yeah, so did they change the script? Yeah. I don't know. How nice of them. Yeah, <laughs> that was Stephen Frears, I expect, yes. Yeah, oh, no, she said, no, I, it, it was in the script. Oh, was it right? Yes, it was in the script, because um, she comes out with it straight away, doesn't it? The moment she meets somebody, she said, I have a hip repair. Tita titanium, she says, That's I think, right. she yes. said. Oh. Yes. So it, um, so it was rather convenient, you know. They say you should use everything you've got <laughs> when you act. Well, there we are. How nice of it to and oblige. It and although it was summer, it, the sea was very cold and I used to swim every morning. Um, and, and that helped, that actually helped it by getting so, co so cold. <laughs> in actual fact, I couldn't feel anything. And that's when it was the most sore. I'm rather, I'm born optimist. So I, am at, I thought I'll have this done and then I'll give it, um, I don't know, uh, two months perhaps, before I'll feel really kind of better. Okay. But of course, well not surprisingly, but of course I felt a great deal better much sooner than that. <laughs> I think it helps. I mean, I think, I think swimming is, I've done that all my life and been very, very keen about it. And I think it kind of helps anything really. Right. Help the arthritis which I've got now, which my ma had, I think it helps that too enormously. Uh, and and I know, although it was very sore doing it with my knee, um, of course the comparison to afterwards was nothing. It's glorious to be able to then swim 
um, and not have that pain. I remember, uh, the first thing I remember about the operation is having to walk up a flight of stairs the night I had it done. <laughs> have I exaggerated about that? No. It was the second night, actually. Oh, it was the second night, was <laughs> it? Oh, thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do remember that. Um, I'm, uh, I remember, I think I had an epidural. Did I? Yes, you did. Yes. I had an epidural, which I'd had when I had Vinti, funnily enough. Yeah. Um, and the patient. And so I did, know what was going on and I remember you. having a nice chat. Yes. Then I actually don't remember anything else. It's so wonderful because usually people st people are chatting to you, and they say just do this. And I say, I th I don't know with this because I've had I've had all sorts of things, Achilles tendon snapped and everything like that. So I've done this quite a lot. But I remember them saying, "We'll give you this injection, so you you don't feel anything." With it. And then they say, "Now count." to 20 or something, and you go, oh, well, this obviously hasn't worked. And you go, one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> <laughs> then, you d then you don't know anything. And you're crashed out, yeah. and the next thing, somebody's giving you a good shake and saying, pull yourself together, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's essential. I mean, living in an old house, yeah. it was an essential thing, because, you know, I don't have a straight flight of stairs, carpeted flight of stairs, I have a... a, a a wound round wooden flight of stairs which are very uneven and so that's essential absolutely right. essential to just have somebody there even if you if you never come you know if you never come to to need them. to yeah. or need them yes it's just comforting yeah. and that's if you ca if you possibly can that's very comforting and it's essential your leg back and forth yes that's very good that's very good because you know as you say you've got to get it back to a certain angle yeah. So that's that's something you just have to have in your mind. You have to do it. It's not hard, um, but it requires a bit of effort and it requires a bit of concentration. But it's worth doing, yeah. really worth doing. I tell you, a very good place to do that is on the loo. <laughs> very, very good indeed. Yeah. Just you swing, you know, yeah. you could sit there with a book yeah. and swing your leg <laughs> and get it back to a proper angle. Yeah. No, I think that's. Uh, I mean, that's the best kind of challenge because you think I'm going to do this, and by this date or this time, I'm going to be, as, as Jonathan says, I had to go to a premiere, and I'm not walking up a red carpet as a premiere with a stick and a limp. I'm going to, you know, even if when I get in, I fall over. Um, but so it gives you an incentive, a wonderful incentive. Just give yourself a goal and think by that time, I'm going to, walk this distance and I'm going to walk this distance without a limp a bit and that to a certain extent still happens a bit mm. but with both my knees I mean uh, um, if I go anywhere for if I have to drive up to London um, and I'm with David um, who has a, a dodgy knee and two dodgy <laughs> hips actually they're both a bit better we um, we do rather a cunning thing and that is we stop the car <laughs> or we get the car to stop about five minutes away and then we get out and right. two very old people of 104 get out of the car then we swing around a bit and, <laughs> and walk up and down we get in and then we spring out like gazelles when we get there <laughs> round the corner <laughs> but of course the difference is <laughs> I get out of the car and no one's taking photos of me but I guess for you to get out like a it gazelle can be you can be very putting off. You don't want them to catch you doing that, but it doesn't yeah. often happen. And of course, the longer you don't go up and down the stairs, I mean, if <clears throat> you know, if I'm if I'm down here all day and have no cause to go upstairs to my bedroom, uh, then it, I just, it's not difficult, and it only takes kind of two steps to get myself going. But um, but then you're fine. It is a matter of mind over matter actually and if you're determined to, to get it right mm. and to walk on it and you, you, you've told your mind that you have a brand new knee there's no no reason why I can't you know go up and down the stairs yeah. no there's nothing I was well prepared for it uh, and there's nothing that I would probably have done it sooner had I had the time right. I mean I don't think there's any point in thinking this is going to get better because it's not going to get better. It's probably going to get worse. Um, so the sooner you can have it done, um, I think the better better it is. And also the more able you are to do your physio afterwards, because that's essential, mm. absolutely essential to do it. 
I don't think there was a moment when I thought that. I, I thought, I'm so pleased I've had that done. Uh, and now I think, I think you mustn't... The mistake is, I think, you mustn't think that it's going to be absolutely pain-free and wonderful straight away. It's what I can't reiterate enough about, about uh, the physio. Because the, the more you do of that and the more you can keep yourself and just do a regime of, you know, of just swinging your leg or whatever, um, the, the easier it's going to be for you. So it's what you, it's what you require for yourself, really. And I had the, 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 the thing at the back of my mind that I had to work very soon and I had to dance and I had to show that I didn't have a limp. So that was very, very good for me. It is, when you're, I mean, the shock of being taken up a flight of stairs the day after you've had this done is, it's very painful. And it, and it is quite, you think I'll never be able to do this. But you can, but you can, you can overcome that. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. You have to exercise, you have to do it. You have to do the physio and, and they come, wonderfully at Runnymede. They came in every day and, uh, and worked with me and gave me all sorts of exercises to do. And, uh, and the more you do it, I mean, when I say you have to do it, it's up to you really. If you want to get it, if you want to get it working again, then you must teach it how to. And that's what the physio is about. So if you want to go on with a limp all your life, but maybe not so much pain, then you don't do the physio. But if you want to actually get back to um, what you were beforehand, almost, if you can, then do the physio. The luxury of operating on Judy Dench is that she was very driven in terms of the time commitments. And there was only a very short window during which we could do the actual operation. Now, she'll allude to this in the actual um, the video itself because she essentially only had six weeks in which she could get over the operation. And so, again, I think one of the things that's so important is to have a series of times that you have an idea of where you're going to be and when um, as you go through the process. Again, this is a great question because we know, because I do hips and knees, I know that people get over hip replacements quicker than they get over knee replacements. And so if you think about it, there's a whole load of people who've had a knee replacement that are having pain and stiffness and difficulties for slightly longer than they would do if they were having a hip. And so I think the misconception is that knees are worse than hips. And I don't think they are, I just think it takes longer to get over them. And so therefore in any given time frame, there's a bigger bunch of people who are getting over the knee than they will be getting over the hip. I think it's fair to say that it's very rare for any knee replacement surgeon to do a revision before one year. I think most knee surgeons would acknowledge that knees continue to get better for up to a year after the operation. Now that's not a one size fits all and if someone is obviously struggling then someone may, we may have to do something slightly sooner than that. But in general I think the recovery can get better and better for up to the year period. As you'll hear with, um, with Judy Dent, she the problem she had was going up and down the stairs. And that actually took her about six months to get over. But slowly but surely as she did so, the stairs got better and then by the six months she was, she was functioning very well. I think there is an increasing body of evidence that shows that if you can have physiotherapy before the operation, then you will do better. But of course the physiotherapy quite often is walking. And if the patient is therefore walking a lot before the operation, then they're going to do better than someone who is tending not to do very much because they didn't want to have the operation but also weren't really in the mood for it. I mean, every knee surgeon will tell you that when you have the patient asleep on the operating table, you test the knee from full extension, which is where it's absolutely um, straight, as flexed up as you can get it. And generally speaking, you don't let the patient off the table until they can put their heel on their thigh. So the range of movement you get during the operation is as close to full as possible. There is quite a lot of data though that shows that if your range of bend, your flexion, before the operation was restricted, you will have a restricted range afterwards, i.e. what you get afterwards is dependent on what you've got before. And This plays back to what I was saying a minute ago about trying to get on and do the knees before they start getting a very restricted range of movement. One of the most important things as a knee surgeon is to make sure that all of the non-operative courses have been exhausted. And the irony of course is as a knee replacement surgeon I spend a lot of my time trying to persuade people not to have knee replacements done. And so the natural um, way of treating that would be to work your way up the analgesic ladder starting with stronger and stronger painkillers, physiotherapy, 
steroid injections, and then if operative interventions are planned, to consider half a knee replacement or a high tibial osteotomy, and only then, once all of these considerations have been made, to go on and do the total knee replacement.